Hello, good morning. How are you? It's a beautiful Monday morning. I hope you are doing well. How are you? You, the person that is watching this, spirit, soul, body, family, everything that pertains to you, is it in order? Are you experiencing the peace of God? I hope you are. And if you are not, may the peace of God that passes all human understanding God, your heart and mind in Christ Jesus as you open up your heart and receive it. You know, it's not just about asking. You've got to receive, then you can experience. So may his shalom be your experience today as a person and over your family and everything that pertains to you. Because it is written, you will perfect that which concerns me. So God is into the business of doing that. Anyway, so I went for a wedding on Saturday, like I told you. And before I left home, the weather had been dilly darling, sunshine, clouds, sunshine, clouds. So I had this conversation with God while I was trying to figure out if I should carry my jacket because the attire I had on for the day was open and I didn't really want to feel cold. By the time I left, we had agreed. So the weather was going to be okay, so I didn't really need a jacket. <laughs> yeah, we got to the church, the service was out, and hardly had the bride prepared herself to walk into the service. Then it began drizzling, and then it rained. <laughs> An umbrella had to be gotten for her so that she could actually walk in. Then it rained and rained and rained and rained and rained. The service is going on, it's raining. And I'm having this conversation on the inside of me with God of really, I thought it wasn't going to rain. It's basically grumbling here and there telling him about how unimpressed I am about the fact that it has rained and how it's not stopping, Jesus, why, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it finally stopped raining at the end of the service. Interesting and very ironic, actually. So we stayed around, took our pictures. It's a very beautiful scenery. Um, and then proceeded to the reception area, which was very near anyway. I had to run home and get a jacket at one particular point because I couldn't trust the weather. <laughs> so while there, as the decorator is setting up the final piece, because they had been interrupted by the rain, it began drizzling again. Now, I wasn't excited. I was actually very exasperated. I'm thinking, God, it's reception time. It actually can't be raining. I finally asked God, what should I actually do? Because I don't seem to be winning. He told me, just hold someone's hand and agree. I held my friend's hand who was sitting next to me. And I was like, Jesus, we are grateful for the rain. But uh-uh. No, 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 no. Amen. Guys, guess what? It stopped raining. <laughs> A few minutes later, the sun came out. The decorators were done and the function set off. And the rest of the evening was actually clear. It was a beautiful wedding reception. So what am I trying to say? First of all, two are better than one. Sometimes you need somebody else to actually hold your hand and agree with you over a matter and it shall be established. Number two, your faith will surely be challenged because it's very precious to God and the enemy likes and wants to frustrate you, making it look like God is a liar. When you have received the word of the Lord, like the Bible says in Matthew 13, talks about the, the parable of the sower and how the word once established in our hearts, the enemy comes hard after it to steal it from our hearts. See, the word of God is spirit and life. When you hear from God, 
you receive spirit and life. So the enemy is after that word because it does bear fruit in your life. So every time you hear God, I want you to know, like Jesus said it, trials will come your way on account of the word, the seed. So you've got to hold on to the word of God that you have heard him speak forth because with it carries, with it there is life life for you in whatever situation for whatever situation you have received that very word for so hold on to it hold on to it fight the good fight of faith keep believing because guess what in the end god and i won yes god and i won the journey was on the strife with the enemy was there yes and that is true the battle is on because you have received the word of God, but do not let go of it. Hold on to the word of God and hold on to God He is faithful. And do not be afraid when you are feeling doubtful. At the end of the day, God is bigger than our hearts. God is bigger than our doubts. God is bigger than our fears. And He can handle. He is not insecure. God is big. So, if you have heard from the Lord pertaining a matter, you have inquired and inquired and inquired, and He has resounded His word to you, His promises to you, hold on to that word. He keeps His word, He fulfills His promises to you. Simply say, Amen, agree, accept. God will surely do what he said he will do which means you need to hear God concerning everything in your life you need to engage the father have conversations with God concerning everything do not be afraid or do not feel you cannot talk to the father about anything you can't talk to Jesus to God to the father the son and the Holy Spirit about anything and he is speaking and he will respond to you. So as you speak to him, believe you are hearing him and act upon his voice. If you're not sure, keep on inquiring. He'll make it clear to you. Why? Because he loves you and is a good shepherd. My sheep hear my voice and they follow me. You are loved. You are loved. You are loved. God is not out to fail you. He can never fail you. It's not his plan to fail you. You have an enemy and he doesn't like you as much as he doesn't like God. So, but greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So wherever you are, may the Lord bless you. May his face shine upon you. May his grace which abounds towards us become your experience as you embrace it. Have a lovely day and have a lovely week. Bye-bye.